Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at uh, the equipment and a couple of standard loadouts that I like to bring to the missions. As always, shameless self-plug before we jump into the topic. If you like the content, feel free to subscribe and leave a nice comment uh, down below. Let's move to equipment. Um, the topic of equipment is actually one that is quite broad. So instead of now going through the entirety of all equipment, I figured it would be much more helpful for you to give you a couple of pointers and uh, tips of how to equip your soldiers um, the most efficient way and by most efficient I mean finding that sweet spot be, uh, between not investing too much supplies because for many many months in the beginning you will be incredibly supply starved and on the other hand getting the most out of your uh, money uh, during the uh, during that same time. Um, I would characterize that specifically the beginning of the game um, is easier just with a standard equipment um, for those who are starting a new long war mission, um, a new long war uh, campaign. You will get med kits, you will get flashbang grenades, you will get um, uh, the normal grenades, all of that, and smoke grenades, all for free, as many of them as you want. And you got to keep that in mind um, if you're equipping a character that all of those are actually incredibly uh, valuable and you can beat the beginning uh, the entirety of the beginning campaign with only those um, elements so to make a long story short i would recommend first and foremost to just get very comfortable with the basic items because that's all you need at the beginning i am seldomly finding myself building anything for the first few months until the point where you're reaching that early uh, mid-game, mid-game-ish um, point and where you um, just need a little bit extra oomph, um, maybe prior to getting to the laser tier uh, weapons, um, just getting that extra oomph to cope with the increased enemy um, density. So let's take a look at the items that I would um, start building at that point. Number one, I would probably go for AP rounds. They are incredibly uh, cheap, 10 supplies and only one alien alloy. You can see that I've built quite a few of them. They are great on uh, gunners, they are great on snipers, they are great on rangers. So all of the classes that um, want to uh, deal either a lot of damage um, or that have a high um, uh, innate chance to hit enemies so in that case probably not gunners but definitely rangers and um, and snipers they usually uh, get those AP rounds uh, from my side and I would even argue that until very uh, deep into the uh, campaign you can still use AP rounds efficiently so that's the first item that you should be aware of in the mid uh, to early game second item uh, that I can highly recommend um, is the alloy uh, plating it costs only a trooper corpse and yet another alien alloy it doesn't cost um, uh, any supplies which is the core point where that item is really good giving you that extra one point of ablative uh, armor just makes it incredibly uh, uh, valuable i have used a lot of them and at the beginning um, uh, when you're um, starting to develop the predator suits you might not have enough um, uh, supplies to um, equip all of your characters i mean they are 30 supplies a pop which is quite a st uh, stiff price um, at the early middle game. Um, if you are going with alloy platings, however, yes, you're sacrificing a slot, but you will be in that sweet spot of seven, eight, nine hit points uh, where you cannot be one shot. And oftentimes the three extra hit points really save your day. So what I would do with um, newbie um, characters um, at the beginning to be cost efficient is I would get myself AP rounds alternatively tracer rounds that help to hit targets so either of the two are working fine then as weapons i would uh, go for uh, the standard laser um, rifle which if you take a look at my rifles there you go standard laser rifle which only is 20 supplies and as armor 
I would um, really go with the alloy plating. So uh, for the cheap price of around 30 um, uh, supplies, a little bit of valerium and just really tiny amount of uh, alloys, you would get a core set of, um, uh, of items that will increase your survivability and at the same time allow you to dish out a lot of uh, damage. Generally speaking, I would definitely uh, broadly go for uh, laser weapons as uh, they uh, tend to be very helpful even until the later um, stages of uh, the game. And once you get to higher uh, weapon tiers, you can always give uh, the laser weapons uh, to your newer uh, soldiers as they have that innate bonus to hit. So that's kind of the core equipment. What I then do on top of the core equipment is I tend to reserve one slot for every character that um, has a chance to get close to enemies and I research hazmat uh, vests as soon as possible. They are very versatile, cost only 15 supplies each as well, but they make you immune to fire, acid and poison, which eliminates a lot of the crowd control and a lot of the very very nasty effects that uh, that you're going uh, to uh, to face. You can see that uh, I go as far as to put one on every single character nowadays, uh, just so that I can ignore some of the characters. For instance, Purifier doesn't do anything, um, uh, just because you do have the Hazmas vest to, to counter that. Uh, Chrysalid doesn't immediately uh, kill you later. Um, Vipers uh, with their poison spit do not do anything and the enemies don't know that everyone is wearing them so that's a really nice additional feature that you should be aware of highly recommend uh, that as you are then transitioning into uh, kind of the mid game you will see that a lot of the uh, weapon tiers around uh, laser will become more and more affordable and i only really took like a few of them for each of the character classes uh, stem guns as uh, lmgs you can probably go without even taking them. They are not essential. Definitely sniper lances, uh, um, laser lances, definitely laser cannons. Of course, a lot of laser rifles and even the scatter race, which is the laser version of uh, the um, shotgun. So you can see that I built like between two and three. Keep in mind, I do have around 120 soldiers in my roster. Um, so you can uh, do the math how, how many ever uh, people you want to keep in your roster. I've seen people uh, get along with as, as little as 60 and um, or 50 and really keep a tight formation, skip most of the missions. But if you uh, go big and wide, just like um, I like to play uh, the game, 120 to 150 soldiers, uh, then um, the name of the game is... Um, is probably equipping them the vast majority of the team and having a somewhat uh, usable team with a base equipment is core to making sure that you're going to survive survivability absolute uh, uh, highest priority and then making sure that people are hitting weapons are the main source of damage keep that in mind which means one-time usable uh, effects as nice as they uh, seem are just not as powerful one of uh, the most powerful uh, bits of tool uh, tools and equipment is really the flashbang grenade until uh, very late in the game uh, the smoke grenade until very late in the game and uh, the med kit and you get all of that for free you don't even need to invest in it so where you want to put your investments is a bit in the armor uh, section uh, um, I am personally a big fan of the vest slot, like uh, you can have one vest per character uh, and you get an extra slot in uh, Long War, so I'm calling it the vest slot, so uh, that um, it's so good, the, the abilities here are so good that you definitely want to give every single character that, uh, that uh, if you can afford it, a vest. So uh, that's the standard equipment. Now moving more towards the later uh, parts of uh, the game, you will see that there are other um, items that I can recommend. And this game here is not yet in the true end game. End game, so a couple of uh, the uh, better pieces of ammunition are not available yet. <clears throat> but uh, the core AP rounds are still very much uh, usable, uh, both. The blue screen rounds as well as the tail rounds that uh, uh, that do deal either additional damage to mechanical units or additional damage to uh, biological units are 
definitely uh, worth investing uh, in uh, if you want to upgrade your ammunition. I personally found that upgrading the weapons instead of the ammunition first is uh, more effective in my uh, in my uh, book. Mine shields, whenever you can, you should consider using them just to add that extra layer of immunity again uh, against uh, many other abilities such as panic, mind control, stuns, disorientation, and the like. Mind shields plus Hesmas vest plus one type of ammunition would be the go-to for many of uh, the frontline operatives. If you are a little bit further back, you might have additional other items, but Hesmas plus mind shield um, equal just a lot of immunities against uh, the core fun uh, the core functions that enemies can take. Other than that. Uh, plasma grenades are very helpful. Once you research them, I would highly recommend you to uh, to take uh, them uh, into your uh, into your uh, team. Uh, and for some um, more sneaky missions, I like uh, the shape charges to open the doors um, for uh, uh, for VIPs, and of course the school check to um, uh, go on with uh, the uh, the missions. As the game. Uh, progresses you will find yourself to trans uh, transition into mech weapons then later gauss weapons and then later plasma weapons you now have four tiers of weapons and uh, just one thing that i want to highlight the way that i did it I'm not saying it's the only way to do it but i would uh, maybe recommend that you take a look into it is i always had a kind of core set of weapons, in this case uh, laser weapons. Then when getting the next tier, in this case mag rifles, um, I very much look whether or not I can afford upgrading. You can see um, uh, I sold a few of the laser rifles and invested into upgrading uh, mag rifles. Reason for that is the difference between mag rifles and laser rifles in terms of cost is not as much, but it gets much more costly afterwards. So the majority of everyone is currently carrying mag rifles. That's uh, at, in the early end game now the new baseline. Then I went to coil um, and pretty much almost skipped that um, and uh, directly tried to go for plasma. I still ended up buying um, uh, coil weapons for one um, team. You could do a similar uh, jump and say you're starting with laser weapons only and then uh, directly fast tech to coil weapons and try to um, uh, to get your team or uh, your entire um, uh, your entire armory uh, the coil rifles but with 50 supplies a pop and uh, quite a hefty alien alloys and uh, larium crystal uh, cost on top of it i just really didn't feel that i could afford this for let's say 30 um, uh, soldiers at a time uh, which brings us to uh, the top of uh, the pops the, the plasma tier um, what i try to do is establish a baseline at mech uh, rifles then just get a few coil weapons uh, there and i just recently have researched in this game here plasma as soon as you do have plasma of course you want to continue pu pumping uh, that out but even with a pretty solid income of 1,600, um, you would be surprised how fast 20 plasma rifles are burning almost the entire income in, in one go. And that's just the, uh, the rifle. Same goes for uh, the, um, the armor. You see the first upgrade to Predator's uh, um, uh, armor with 30, um, uh, with 30 uh, supplies is still okay. But once you go to like the top tier warden armor with 80 supplies a pop, uh, you're probably only focusing really on your top team, A team and the B team, maybe the C team, and everyone else otherwise needs to get the, uh, the hit points from somewhere else. And that's where my line of argumentation with um, Predator Armor plus maybe Alloy Pettings comes into play. Uh, that gives you, and specifically the higher uh, uh, platings, will give you even more ablative um, armor. It goes up to five, if I think, on the highest uh, tier. So that's a budget or more economical version to quote unquote equip a tank, um, uh, even if you can't afford uh, Warden Armor. One uh, piece of advice. Uh, 
since we're talking about equipment in general is please make sure if you are going with equipment um, and, and purchasing the equipment that you um, definitely keep the overall resources that you will get in um, in uh, in mind. More often than not, I found myself just uh, short of other upgrades as well. And the base management itself kind of comes at a, um, at a, in a as a competing priority to equipment. So if you feel comfortable um, going into a mission with subpar gear, you will make much more progress on the strategic layer and start to snowball there, which is what I've done. I played the game um, and uh, just focusing on being the best, um, uh, playing the technical game uh, to the best of my abilities. And I could uh, essentially make big strides in the research uh, department, even getting me ahead uh, to the aliens to the point where now it's uh, I'm I'm having little trouble um, coping with the aliens. And we're like in October, just after the massive rise in their strength rating, I still don't have any problem even uh, with the C uh, and D team uh, due to uh, just the amount of... Um, uh, the amount of income and the amount of um, uh, economy that I've created. So that's uh, the technical advice uh, for um, for equipment. Now, really quickly before ending uh, this uh, here, going into the discussion of uh, how to build up a team. Um, and you can see with the different classes uh, that... Uh, and if you're looking up other guides, you will probably see a lot of discussion around uh, what the best setup is. And uh, the whole uh, feature of Long War to define predefined squads and then only let the guys work together as a squad, all of that is fine. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that that is a wrong way of playing it. But what I'm trying to teach you is a bit more of a fundamental understanding of how I build teams to go into missions and how I find success pretty much um, regardless of who is going into the, uh, the mission. When I'm uh, starting to deploy um, uh, the soldiers, there is a pretty simple, a couple of pretty simple rules. Number one, um, diversity is king. If you can take a new class into it, don't double up on another class. Chances are that the new class uh, will bring more to the table than the other classes are. Secondly, you will never uh, you will never be in a luxurious position in long war where you can always take six or seven or eight uh, in there. Be prepared to al also run difficult missions with only three, four or five uh, soldiers, which also kind of makes the whole concept of fixed squads a bit obsolete. What I'm trying to build uh, the squads around is always the same core idea. I'm starting with the support class and uh, try to understand how will I keep my team alive. I always have one specialist uh, in each of the teams, unless I'm running out of specialists, in which case I'm uh, building a team without one, uh, of course. So that's number one, base number one covered. Base number two cover, uh, covered is how do I remove cover? I do that either with adding a technician, uh, which is a great class to do that, my primary class to do that would be a Grenadier, which is why I have slightly more Grenadiers than Technicians in here. They are really effective in what they're doing. My Tertiary class would be probably a Gunner, um, who can also remove uh, cover. Uh, and either of those three classes or a Spark, if everything else fails, uh, would be uh, probably the go-to uh, topic. So now I do have support. I do have uh, cover removal. Next question that I ask myself is, how do I get rid of armor or heavily armor targets? That is usually a gunner, that could be a, a grenadier, that could be a technician, that could be, uh, in some cases, um, if I do have uh, shredding uh, on other classes, that could be any of the other classes, but I need to have some way of dealing with armor in some uh, capacity. If I don't have any of the, shred uh, the shredding capabilities available, I'm usually going for a sharpshooter or a ranger with uh, armor penetrating ammunition so that I can deal with it. 
Uh, that third point is so important that I want to emphasize I'm probably taking more than one class that can deal with armor. So there is nothing wrong if you already have a grenadier to put a sniper in there uh, or a ranger with ammo, ar armor penetrating ammunition so that uh, that third base is covered. So now you got support, now you got um, uh, 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 removal of cover, now you got yourself uh, dealing uh, a way to deal with armor fourth base that you need to cover is some sort of a scouting uh, method in any shape or form. I can either go with the Reaper, uh, but that's a hero class, so I only got one of them, which is why I'm finding myself more often than not to take a Shinobi with me. Uh, they are excellent scouts. You can uh, still achieve the same uh, if you're going with an assault class, but probably Shinobi um, in most of the cases, which is at the point when you have all of those four bases covered, when you want to cover the fifth base, and you can never have enough of that, which is more firepower. Um, everything else, every other class, uh, uh, would then probably fall into that category. So uh, I love to have a sharpshooter if I haven't had the chance uh, to have that. I love to have an assault if I haven't had the chance to do that. I love to have a ranger if I haven't had the chance to do that. I will basically fill fill up um, the um, the um, SWAT with those uh, classes. Now, finally, if I can afford it, and if it just happens to uh, if uh, if it uh, just happens to um, uh, to be free, I'm of course going to add as many of the hero classes as possible. But um, the the uh, four simple bases before adding firepower should get you pretty much through the team building every single time. First of all, start with uh, support and healing, then move on to cover removal, then move on to a way of uh, dealing with armor, then move on um, uh, to, to a way of scouting and finding packs, and then move on to, um, to basically uh, add more firepower. And in that line of prioritization, you can also see how you can build a team of three or a team of four when you maybe not cover all of the bases. But in that line of uh, priority, you should still be fine um, and be okay in those missions. I hope that was um, helpful for, uh, for, uh, for you guys. If I've missed anything in any of the guides that I've said or if a topic uh, for Long War is not yet sufficiently uh, clear, feel free to let me know. Um, overall, these guides cover Long War pretty in-depth. I think the three and a half hours of content uh, for everything that you need to know about Long War, you should be ready to go. Don't be ashamed if you go in and uh, start at Rookie. There's absolutely no shame in uh, that. Long War is difficult. And just get your uh, feet wet and start um, appreciating uh, the uh, the mod. It's definitely a good mod, uh, but it will take a while to get used to all of the changes. Thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, see you in one of the new runs. Bye-bye.